Hey guys, welcome to part one of the two-part tutorial on how to create your first Java application. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about creating your first, your project folder and primitives. So first, let's create your project by heading over to this button, clicking it, selecting Java application, clicking next, then you can name your project folder whatever you want, then clicking finish, I already have a project folder up. It will have it then it will display your main class like this which will contain your public main method and in this method which I'm going to talk a little bit more about methods in a later tutorial but anything in this method will be executed when you run your program that is all you really need to know for now until I talk to you guys a little bit more about methods later on so first primitives primitives are the most basic type of data that can be stored into a variable they can be integer values, character values, true false, anything like that. And here are some of the, here are all of the primitive data types. As you can see, we have byte, short, int, long, double, float, character, and boolean. I'll briefly explain what each of these do. Uh, do. So a byte is just a eight-bit integer, and it just stores an integer value. A short is also is a 16-bit integer, an int is a 32-bit integer, and a long is a 64-bit integer. Now, generally, you're not going to need to use bytes or shorts because they are designed originally to help with memory usage in older computers because they just didn't have as much memory as we do nowadays. So you'll be able to get away with integers for most of your numbers, and sometimes you might need to use a long if you're calculating just huge numbers but integers will be the way to go for most of your programs because memory is cheap you have a lot of it and generally you're not going to be doing a huge um, like a huge number then we move on to doubles and float uh, doubles and floats a double is just a decimal value uh, 32 bit or 64 bit I'm sorry and a float is just like a double except that it is a 32-bit and it is less precise. You're not going to use floats as often because they just you just don't need it to use them that often and doubles would be the way to go in most of your programs for for decimal values. We then have the character which can store any type of character content like a exclamation point, a letter. Uh, you can't have a sequence of characters in one defined in one variable because it only chooses it only takes one character and then we have the boolean which takes a true or false so in order to assign a value to these you simply have to after the after the name of the variable which can which has to be one word or one one whole grouping of characters you can't have a space you have to put in equals and then let's assign this integer to 10. All right, and it would be the same for a byte and a short and a long. Now for a double, you're going to have to do the same thing, equals, and let's do this 1.0. And remember the semicolon at the end of the line? I forgot to tell you about that. It, because that just tells Java that the line is over and you need to move on to the next line so it, it doesn't keep looking way the heck over here for nothing. And to assign a value to a float, it's just the same as a double, except at the end of the line, you have to put an F to signify that it is a float number and not a double, because Java automatically rec recognizes a 1.0 or anything with a decimal as a double, and just this F symbolizes that it's a float. Then for a character, you're going to need to do the same thing again, equals, and instead of just putting a, in the character value, which would just be like saying taking another variable and assign assigning that value to C which sometimes you want to do sometimes you don't but let's say you want a character B at C you'd have to do apostrophes and in between those two you'd have to put in your character so I'm gonna do character B and now these are these apostrophes are very important and if you don't have them they might mess up your code if you don't intend for that to happen And lastly, we have booleans, which can take a true or false. 
and this is just put a, uh, put an equal sign and then just do true or false. I'm going to put false. And those are all the basic primitives that you'll ever need to use. And now let's do some computations. But first, let me talk a little bit about strings. Strings are just like primitives, except they hold a group of characters, like a phrase or a sentence, stuff like that. But string is not a, par a primitive. It is an object. And I'll talk a little bit more about objects in a later tutorial, because there's slight differences that make it make it better than a primitive because you can do more stuff with it but we don't need to go into that right now so in order to create a string you're gonna need to do capital S because Java is case sensitive and note all of these integer long all of that has to be lowercase for it to work you can't have a capital letter see it just gives you well in this case double is an object but let's say I wanted to capitalize O see you can't just have a capital O in there, it has to all be lowercase for it to work. So in order to create the string object, you do capital S, string, and then give it whatever name you want. I'm just going to call it S. And then you can declare it the same way as a primitive, equals. Instead of how the character has, an apost uh, has apostrophes, you have to do quotation marks for your phrase. And let's just put in hello world. And then don't forget the semicolon at the end of the line. Oop, I already have S defined up here as a short. Let's just call this a string. And now this string variable contains hello world. So, now let's move on to basic computation like I was saying before. So if you wanted to change a value of a of a, a value of a variable later on in your program this is all you need to do so let's change integer i from 10 up here to 11 so all you need to do is go i equals 11 now you don't have to do you don't have to declare int again because it already knows that i is going to contain an integer variable so you just have to you can just leave that out now let's say you want to add to i if you wanted to add one, you can do a simple thing like this, i plus plus semicolon, and that just signifies i plus one is equal to i, but you could also do i equals i plus one or plus two or plus another variable, doesn't really matter, so let's just do i plus two there. And for subtracting, it is the same thing. If you want to just, just subtract by 1, you do i minus minus for just 1. Or you could do i equals i minus 1 or 2. Same thing. Any variable could go here at this i. It doesn't have to be the same. It's just whatever value you want in the end will equal i. And just depending on what you put in here, that's all you got to know. For multiplication, all you have to do is i equals uh, a number, let's say 2, times, let's do 2, and that will assign 4 to i. For division, you're just going to go i equals, let's do 10, divided by 2, and it's just the backslash, pretty simple. And for modulus, which is just like finding the remainder, so you just do i equals 5 percent sign which is modulus 2 and that will assign a value of, of 1 to this i value uh, i variable so those are all the basic computations that you can do within your programs and this will allow you to this will allow you to do basic math uh, create like a calculator program uh, test for cases, all that good stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a future tutorial. All right, that's all I got for you guys this tutorial. Just stay tuned for the second part where I talk to you about system output. Now, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comment section, and I'll get back to you. And please comment, rate, and subscribe.